Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a little bit of a narrative watch. Wall Street is real confused when it comes to AI. On the one hand, there is growing questions around whether it is priced appropriately or whether it's overhyped. We've talked endlessly this summer about exactly that. And I've also mentioned that I believe that it has to do with the beginning of the rate cutting cycle coming up, providing an alternative narrative. At the same time, there is a counterpoint that's arguing that AI is in a super cycle or a super cycle for AI is coming up. Case in point, this article from the New York Post, Apple launches AI-powered iPhone 16, but Wall Street split on whether it will spark a super cycle. Nominally, the article is about Apple, which we cover in the main part of the episode today, and whether Apple intelligence can actually help sluggish iPhone sales recover. But the larger question is just how significant Apple intelligence is going to be and what it's going to say about users and their adoption of artificial intelligence tools. Interestingly, that wasn't the only time I saw that word yesterday. AMD CEO Lisa Su, who is obviously not an unbiased observer, was quoted as suggesting that the AI supercycle is just beginning. Su told Yahoo Finance, we've accelerated our AI roadmap and are on a one-year cadence of new products. It is an AI supercycle. Now, what exactly supercycle means is, I think, up for interpretation. Presumably, this refers to some combination of financial performance and market results, as well as just business prioritization in general. I will say that the last time someone called for a super cycle, it was in Web3, and that did not go well for that particular person or for the industry as a whole. Mostly, I just think it's funny because we have these two totally different conversations that are happening at the same time. There is, on the one hand, the idea of AI's relationship to markets and whether it's overhyped and overpriced in markets. And then there is the inexorable transformation of professional and personal experiences that AI is undertaking day by day regardless of what happens in the stock market. I think it's fairly important to be able to separate those two things as we discuss whether or not AI is in a super cycle, because in short, when it comes to our actual lives, of course it is. The question is just whether the markets will agree the whole time. Speaking of markets, a company that's getting some positive coverage around its AI approach is Oracle. The Wall Street Journal flagged that mistakes that Oracle made at the beginning of cloud computing are now actually helping it as it digs into AI. They write long stagnant stock is up 34% thanks to its neutral status in the booming market for AI computing power. Last night, the company reported results and they were actually better than expected. As part of that, they also announced partnerships with Amazon and Google, which led to analyst Patrick Moorhead saying that Oracle is, quote, on a roll, and that its partnership with Amazon Web Services is monumental as, quote, these two companies have essentially been at war with each other since AWS was formed 15 years ago. Yahoo Finance writes, combined with the Oracle partnership, Moorhead explains that the Oracle database is very much alive and well and their enterprise customers are demanding it. Moorhead explains why Oracle's on-premise rather than cloud approach to data could be valuable in the world of AI. As AI becomes more of a priority, Moorhead notes that data will be the company's biggest play. He explains, quote, The biggest obstruction from enterprises going hardcore into AI is the AI problem. It's getting the data right. It's commingling the right data to give generative AI the right solutions without leaking confidential information. And for the customers I talked about, Oracle is the place to go. So they will be the data broker for the generative AI age. Another AI-related company continuing to perform well is TSMC. Their revenue was up 33% last month in what Bloomberg calls a positive signals to investors betting on a smartphone market recovery and sustained demand for NVIDIA's AI chips. Bloomberg writes, while just a month snapshots, the results could assuage concerns about whether the market has overestimated the durability of AI infrastructure spending. TSMC now makes more than half of its revenue from its AI-driven business line. A couple stories about AI voice avatars to round us out. Audible is inviting a set of U.S.-based narrators to train AI on their voices. The idea is to add more audiobooks to Audible in a quicker, cheaper way, in a way that cuts in existing narrators. This comes after an initiative last year where Amazon began offering U.S.-based self-publishing authors who are using the Kindle store the option of having their works narrated by a generic virtual voice. As of May, more than 40,000 books had taken advantage of that. The idea of this new arrangement is to increase the quality of that type of work. The company said, this beta offering will empower participants to expand their production capabilities for high-quality audiobooks, generate new business by taking on more projects simultaneously, and increase their earning potential. The company says that payments will be made on a title-by-title -title basis through a royalty-sharing model. This will increase narrators' ability to have their voice associated with certain projects. But on the flip side, you have to think that what they'll make from an AI version of their voice will be very different than what they make in the traditional way. And the big question in the long term will be whether there continues to be a market for original voice acting, or whether it will all move to AI. Last story today, and once again on the question of AI voice rights, Vanity Fair reports that before he died, James Earl Jones signed over the AI voice rights to Darth Vader. 
James Earl Jones died on Monday morning at the age of 93 and was famous for numerous roles, especially anchored by his voice, which is probably most famous for being Darth Vader in the Star Wars trilogy. Vanity Fair reported that in 2022, Jones, who was at the time 91 years old, signed over the rights to his archival voice work to a Ukrainian startup called Respeecher. As with everything in AI right now, this is a Rorschach test. Is this an affront to the way things should be? Or does this mean that generations in the future will get to enjoy new renderings of Darth Vader's perfect voice, even if the original himself is not there to do it? Discuss it in the comments or anywhere you like, but for now, that is going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode.